Hello there, everybody! This is Silent Mist, and welcome back to Pokemon Leaf Green! In the last episode, we started our adventure in Mount Moon, and in this episode, we're going to continue our adventure by destroying this Rocket Grunt. Haha, <laughs> get ready to die. But yes, welcome back, guys! It's been a couple of days since I've last recorded, but... Not because I've been a lazy butt face, no, instead it's because I was waiting until the first episode went live so I could start to get some feedback from you guys. And, uh... Mm. As it turns out, the one big secret that I had planned actually didn't pan out, which makes me really sad because I was going to do a thing and then the thing didn't happen because of how YouTube works. But um, essentially, the big old secret was I was going to upload this entire series in 4K and wait until uh, wait for someone to notice that it was in 4K. But as it turns out, so you might have noticed that this video is in 60 FPS if you're watching it in 1080p or maybe 720. I don't know if 720p gets a 1080p uh, or gets a, it gets a 60 FPS profile. But uh, this is in 1080p, 60 FPS, uh, at least what you're probably watching, unless it's way in the future, which in that case it might have changed. But uh, so YouTube allows you to upload content in 4K and it will display content in 4K despite like almost nobody actually having a 4K monitor, but it'll let you do it. Um, and YouTube will also let you upload 1080p footage at 60 FPS. However, you can't do 4K at 60, at least peop normal people can't do that. Um, I've seen test videos on YouTube of 4K footage at 60 FPS, and let me tell you, it is not, <laughs> it is not an enjoyable experience to watch just because, well, on my desktop, which is, Quite powerful, I'd like to think, uh, but at least on my computer, I it stutters like crazy, and uh, you drop frames left and right, and it's just not an all-around good experience. But that's not so much because oh my god, these encounters. That's not so much because of my computer being bad, but more along the lines of the codec that they use to play back the video isn't exactly meant for 4K 60 FPS. So. Yeah, as of right now, no 4K 60 FPS, which is very unfortunate because I kind of wanted to do that. And then it turns out that because I'm up uploading it at 1080p 60, it won't even create a 4K profile at 30 FPS. So yeah, that's that was the big old secret that I had for the last episode. But um, actually, this is like my fifth take of the episode. Uh, my first take was just a hilarious failure. My second take was going fantastically, and I was about five minutes in, and then my computer crashed. And, uh, <laughs> why, computer? Why did you do that? Why did you do that to me? I, I treated you so well, and then you just crash. And so, of course, I lost that, and now I'm doing it again. And then the subsequent takes were just hilariously bad. Like, I, I started, and then I just, my commentary fell apart. So hopefully that won't happen again, but yeah stuff uh also so uh, the main reason why i didn't record like i mentioned before was because i wanted to hear some feedback on what you guys thought about the series and as it looked how it looked at that point and uh there was one thing that i noticed more than anything and it was that one person i believe it was charcoal um charcoal ranger hi there if you're watching this video hi oh i didn't want to do summary uh, summary i wanted to switch you but uh he requested that we don't cut out wild pokemon battles and um after thinking about it for a while, so I think that cutting out Pokemon battles, not all of them, but cutting out some wild battles is kind of necessary for my own sake because I feel like my commentary would suffer greatly if I just kept all the battles in for no other reason than I would complain because battles happen too often, especially in caves. They happen too darn often and if I could avoid them, some of them at least, then it wouldn't be bad. I mean, I won't cut out all battles, and I probably won't cut out trainer battles now that I think about it, at least for the most part. I might do some off screen, but um, yeah, I won't cut out too much. I don't know who he's changing into. I'll just keep my current team out. Um, I will do some training off screen. Like I'm not gonna just power level my way up to level 100 off screen, but I'll do a little bit if need be, just because grinding isn't, at least I don't think it's the most enjoyable thing to watch, but eh, what do I know? I'm just silent miss. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, so that that was something that I wanted to note. Um, other than that, not enough of the series has gone up for me to really get too much feedback. Just the first episode went out yesterday, and the second episode is going to be going out tomorrow. So 
that's a thing. I also remember while I was recording the last take of this episode, I, I came to the realization that I was going to cut out a couple of battles, and then I didn't. Um, and it's currently uploaded on YouTube, and I haven't yet. It's not published yet, and it won't go live until next Monday, which is almost a week from now. But yeah, I realized that I... Oh, crap. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jeebus, cripes. Uh, I realized that a little late, and good thing I still have all the footage, so I don't need to worry about that. But it's still mildly annoying that I forgot to do that. But that's okay. People make mistakes all the time. Um, and unfortunately, like, out of all the Pokemon that I have that are alive, uh, none of them are good for this situation because uh, most of them are not going to be staying in my party. They're just in my party, so I don't need to change out the uh, Poke cards every single couple of episodes. Jesus, Dorito gained a lot of experience from that. If only Dorito was staying in our party, because unfortunately Dorito will not be in our party. But I'm going to get the heal, uh, the dome fossil, I mean, um, because I always get the, wait, yeah, I'm going to get the dome fo fossil and not the helix fossil, because I always get the helix. Did I get the right one? Is the, oh wait, I got the wrong fossil. I, I wanted to get Omanyte, because I always get Kabuto, but Oops. <laughs> um, I goofed that one up. Oops. <laughs> um, I goofed that one up. My bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. We got the tome fossil, and that is most definitely the wrong fossil. But um, this guy right here is is an interesting guy. Um, he is. This is a mechanic that was introduced in this game, and I think was only used in Fire Red and Leaf Green. I don't think this was. I could be entirely wrong, but I'm like at least thirteen percent sure that this mechanic was not used in later games where these random trainers would teach you moves uh, or these people would teach you moves instead of getting a TM for that move which I really wasn't a fan of actually yeah I really didn't like it and it only contributed to this game's general not liking well I shouldn't say not liking but general like okay so this game diamond or not diamond or pearl, <laughs> sorry uh, ruby and Saf. no this is fire red and leaf green are probably my least favorite Pokemon games out of like every single Pokemon game. And that doesn't mean they're bad. They just so happen to be the Pokemon game that I don't enjoy the most. Um, oh, this is a guy that I would very much like to catch because we don't currently have one. But, um, and it has to do with a lot of reasons. I've explained some of them before where I felt like this game was slow. It just felt sluggish playing this game compared to older Pokemon games. The timing at which I played it was just like as I was exiting my phase of super engrossed in video games, like the young childhood engrossment in video games. And before I really became the person that could appreciate games, like before I played it because, oh my god, video games, I love video games, but that evolved into like a deeper appreciation for video games. And this was just a game that I played during that transitionary period. So it's, it's just, it got the short end of the stick and it's my least favorite Pokemon game. My least favorite series, uh, two games out of the series. Oh sweet, we caught that. I was totally expecting it to break out. But um, yeah, so it's a little unlucky in that regard, but this isn't the Pokemon. There is a Pokemon here that I want to catch to add to my team and this was not it. But you can be Eggnog, okay Santru? I don't know why, but this is the name that I thought of off the top of my head. Um, also, I think I asked you in a previous episode that hasn't yet gone up uh, that I need suggestions for names because I'm ultimately going to run out of names for my Pokemon. And when that day finally happens, uh, I don't know what I'll do. But if you guys can come up with food names, that would help me out immensely. But uh, I want to go back to talking about my least favorite Pokemon games of all times. Um, yeah, poor th this poor game is probably my least favorite game. Uh, then Diamond and Pearl came out, which came out right as I started appreciating games. So, um, 
I really enjoyed Diamond and Pearl, and actually, I really enjoyed Platinum. Uh, Platinum is one of my favorite Pokemon games, just because there was a period of time where I hadn't played a Pokemon game in a while, and then I watched the Pokemon, one of the Pokemon movies, the uh, one with... The Diamond and Pearl Pokemon movie, and at that time, I didn't have Pokemon Platinum, and by the time I was finished with that movie, I was just like, oh my god, I need to go play Pokemon. So, I got myself that, and you're not the Pokemon that I want. I think I can catch the Pokemon that I want here. I'm gonna try once more, and if we can get it, that would be fantastic. Uh, please die. <laughs> this is a long, long thing, but, um... Yeah, so Platinum was a game that I really enjoyed. I also really loved the underground system that was in Diamond and Platinum. Uh, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. And then that, unfortunately, never made a cameo in any of the newer games. But, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Uh, Black and White. I never... I finished Black and White. I never finished Black and White 2, though. Uh, and I've heard really good things about that game. I enjoyed Black and White. And, actually, like, I got that game when it was released in only Japan. And there was an English patch for it. So, that was exciting. And I'm also pretty sure that the Pokemon that I want isn't over there now that I've tried to catch it. Um... So, yeah, I really like Black and White. Uh, I need to play through Black and White, too. Uh, but my all-time favorite Pokemon game... Why am I coming back in here? There's no reason to go over here. My all-time favorite Pokemon game is most likely going to be Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Just because... So, before Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out, Ruby and Sapphire were my favorite Pokemon games because they were the last games that I really, really thoroughly enjoyed playing as a, like, a young child. Like, then Fire Red and Leaf Green came out, and that's when I was in that awkward transitionary period. But, like, I played the crap out of Ruby version. Um, and, actually, this is a story that I can tell, but uh, during this one Christmas, I, this was before, I had a Game Boy Color... Uh, no, let's start earlier than that. Uh, my cousin, one of my cousins that's very similarly aged to me, um, him and I, we we were like BFFs when I was super young. Um, I, I would go have sleepovers at his house all the time, and we'd build forts, and we'd play Pokemon in those forts. So um, we got a Game Boy. He had a Super Game Boy. I think he had a Game Boy Color. Uh, he had a Super Game Boy, or what are they called? The Game Boy Pocket, that one, not a Super Game Boy. Uh, he had a Game Boy Pocket before I had a Game Boy Color, and he played through Blue version. Um, sometime later, I ended up getting a Game Boy Advanced, or no, a Game Boy Color and the Gold version. This was my first portable Game Boy console. I think I, yeah, I got the Game Boy before I got the N64, but, um, no, I got it after I got the N64. But, uh, blah, screw that. Um... <laughs> So, he had the Game Boy Pocket and played through Pokemon Blue and was already a Pokemon veteran by the time that I... Um, veteran. Uh, he was... He already got his feet wet with Pokemon by the time I was getting into that. So, he was just like, you should get Pokemon. And I got a Game Boy Color and I got Gold and Silver. No, I... Well, I got Gold, Silver, and Crystal. But my mom would only give me one of them and promise to give me the other ones if I did well in school. So, that was a thing. Um... <laughs> But, so I had gold version, and I played that game to absolute death, and he had silver version at that time, and we played together. Uh, a lot. We would have Link Battles and the whole shebang. Uh, ooh. I, I think we should be able to take Misty. Uh, oh, I haven't been reading Pokemon text because I've been telling you guys a story. Awkward, but that's okay. Um, so, I don't even remember where all this happened. Oh, yeah, so, after a while, a few years later, quite a few years later, the Game Boy Advance had been released, and... I really wanted Ruby and Sapphire. So, like, I asked for a Game Boy Advanced and Ruby and Sapphire, or, and Ruby version over for Christmas. And I got it. And just, it, it just, it just so happened that my cousin also asked for the same set of stuff. And he, well, sort of, he got a Game Boy Advanced and Pokemon Sapphire. And so we got both of them together. And oh my god, that Christmas break. We beat the game over that Christmas break, and nowadays, that's nothing too special, like, sitting down and beating a game over the period of two weeks, but as a kid, oh my god, that was magical. We just played that game to death. Um, and, yeah, I remember running into Latios and Latias accidentally, and I was just like, wait, what, another legendary? What's happening? I thought Groudon and Kyorg were gonna be the only two legendaries, and, oh, that game... That entire experience was a magical experience, and that's why that is my favorite game of all times. 
uh, or was my favorite game of all times. And then Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out, and wow, we just completely obliterated Misty. That wasn't even remotely a challenge. Poor Misty. Uh, but yeah, then Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out, and honestly, they felt... They took a game which I held in really high regard, and made it better in almost every way without ruining it. Like, they improved it without messing it up. So, I very much love Omega Ruby and Alpha, Sa Alpha Sapphire. Actually, I have uh, both of them hanging up on my wall right in front of me, the uh, cases to them. And, ah, uh, they're such good games. Uh, although the funny thing is, I ended up uh, placing a bet with my girlfriend. We were gonna both get, we were gonna get one of each of the games. Uh, so we decided beforehand that we were gonna get the set. And uh, we rock, paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissored for Omega Ruby. I wanted it just because of the nostalgia and she wanted it because she wanted it. And I lost, so I had to get Alpha Sapphire. And yeah, that was, that was an unfortunate thing. I was like, no, I've lost this game that was so important to my soul. <laughs> but um, actually, I think we're going to end things off here, guys. We've been going for 15 minutes or so, hopefully. Um, in the next episode, we will continue on with our adventure. I hope you enjoyed my storytelling of this episode. Uh, if you did, tell me what you think about that, because I can tell you guys more childhood stories about video games and whatnot. But like I said, that's going to be all for now, guys. Uh, I'm going to go out to the that place to the left again to see if I was just being silly and if the Pokemon that I want is actually... Excuse me. And if the Pokemon that I want is actually over there. But, yeah, we'll figure that all out. And, yeah. So, I will see you all again next time. Until then, farewell.